Namaste. I remember you. Of course, there's some context of the word namas that I would not agree with, but eh, that's fine. The meaning is that the processes of hearing of all are in the air. Akatcha. The air, moreover, the locus of the organs of hearing, because it is produced from the fine element, tan matra, whose specific quality is sound, it has sound as its specific quality, by which sound, as a cooperating non material cause, it grasps. Uh, oh, it grasps the sounds from earthen and other substances. And therefore, there is for all one species of hearing, shrutte, with regard to sound. This is the meaning. And thus, then, it has been shown that the air is the locus of the organ of hearing, and that it has sounds as its specific quality. And this fact, that there is one kind of hearing, eka, Shrut tit bam is the first characteristic mark of air. For this one kind of hearing is that condition which phenomenalizes sound, the very thing which its substrate, atreya, is the thing expressed by the word air. For in the absence of such a hearing, there is no individual phenomenal sound belonging to earthen and other substances. Moreover, such a hearing cannot be a quality Gunna. of the various coarse substances, such as earth, because if it be such, then these cannot be both the thing to be phenomenalized and the conditions which phenomenalize. And the second characteristic mark of air is that it is not covered by anything more extensive. If there were no air, the things not limited in extent would be pressed together and could not be separated even by needles. And so as a result, everything would be covered by everything. And it cannot be said that the not being covered by anything is merely because things not limited in extent are not present, for this negation implies a positive energy, a positive entity. For example, a thing limited in extent, and if this positive entity did not exist, there cannot be negation of it, nor can it be said that the energy of intellect chitta chakta could be the substrate for it. Free space, not covered by anything. For being immutable, it cannot have spatial properties that precisely determine. And again, it cannot be said that space, ditch, and time are substances. Dravya, over and above earth, and other coarse elements. Consequently, that particular mutation, which is not covered by anything more extensive, belongs to air only. Thus all is cleared up, when it is proved that the fact that nothing covers it is a characteristic mark of air, so that wherever there is anything that has nothing covering it, there always air is then all pervasiveness is also proved, as he says, thus because a thing which is not limited in extent, it gives the source of the valid idea to prove the real existence of the organ of hearing by saying, from the perception of sounds, for every action is to be affected by an instrument, just as the action of shopping or the like is to be affected by the axe or something similar. So in the case, also, the act of perceiving sound must be accomplished by an instrument. And that which is the instrument is the organ of hearing. Now, if it be axed, why 
may not the eye or some other organ be the instrument of this act? He replies, in case of a deaf man, and of a man not deaf, this is determined by positive and negative arguments, and this is only an elliptical statement. For mutatis, mutandis, we must say, matatis, matandis, we must say that as a result of constraint upon the relation between the organ of touch and wind, vata between the organ of sight and radiance, between the organ of taste and water, and between the organ of smell and earth, supernal touch and other supernal Sensations would also arise. And 41, again, is of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, translated by James Houghton Woods. As a result of constraint upon the relation between the organ of hearing and the air, the supernal organ of hearing. 42. Either as the result of constraint upon the relation between the body and the air, Ka cha, or cha, as a result of the balanced state of lightness, such as that of the cotton fiber, there follows the passing through air. Wherever there is a body, there is air, because it air gives space to the body. The relation of the body with this air is that of obtaining pervasion. By performing constraint upon this relation, the yogin subjugates the relation with this air, and gaining the balanced state of lightness, such as that of the cotton fiber, even to that of stone, even that of atoms of cotton fiber, he becomes light himself. Okay, not stone. Atoms, the lightness such as that of cotton fiber, even to that of atoms of cotton fiber, he becomes light himself, and by reason of this lightness, he walks with both feet upon the water. Next, after this, however, he walks upon nothing more than a spider's thread, and then upon sunbeams. Thereafter, he courses through the air at will. Forty-two. Either as a result of constraint upon the relation between the body and the air, or as the result of the balanced state of lightness, such as that of the cotton fiber, there follows the passing through air. By performing constraint upon the relation between the body and the air, or upon something light, such as cotton fiber, that is by gaining the balanced state, that is the state of the mind which rests in the thing and which is tinged. Book four, 1, Sutra 44, 41, 141. By it, he describes the sequence of the perfection by the words upon water. And if you see behind me the green flag, um, the wholeness, the completeness, the balance of peace, um, And it's not nothing, it is something that you're trying to achieve here. 43. An outwardly unadjusted fluctuation is the great discarnate as a result of this, the dwindling of the covering to the brightness. The fluctuation assumed by the central organ outside the body is the fixed attention, dharana, called discarnate. If it is only an outer fluctuation of the central organ which abides in the body, it is called adjusted, kalpitta. But if it is an outer fluctuation of the central organ, which is itself externalized, in that it, fluctuation, disregards the body, it is, of course, called unadjusted. The yogins, by means of the adjusted one, among those two accomplish the unadjusted great discarnate, by means of which yogins enter the bodies of others. And as a result of this fixed attention, the covering of the sattva, of the thinking substance, whose essence is brightness, 
which has the threefold fruition from the hindrances and the karma, and whose rote is Rajas and Tamas, dwindles away. He describes yet another constraint, which leads to the penetration of another's body, and which leads to the dwindling of the hindrances and karma and fruitions. 43. An outwardly unadjusted fluctuation is the great discarnate. As a result of this, the dwindling, the dwindling of the covering to the brightness. The discarnate describes in the words the fluctuation assumed. In order to show the means of the great discarnate state, which is adjusted, he first describes the discarnate in the words, if it is, the words only a fluctuation, mean thinking only in an imaginary way. He describes the great discarnate in the words, but if it is, he shows that the adjusted and the unadjusted have the relation of means to ends by saying among these two means to. It is that one merely enters another's body as a result of this. Not so, he says in the words, and as a result of this. As a result of this fixed attention means when the great discarnate activity of the center organ has been perfected. It has its threefold fruition from the hindrances and from karma, in birth and length of life, and kind of experiences. Book 2, 13. Limited by body, dehe ham bhavat ya ga. And it is this that has its root in Arajas and Tamas, since from mere sattva, when freed from Rajas and Tamas, there arises discriminative discernment only. Thus the threefold fruition, insofar as it is rooted in Rajas and Tamas, because its essence is in them, obscures the sattva of the thinking substance, and as soon as these have dwindled away, the mind stuff of the yogin, freed from its covering by them, rose and discerns at will. 44. As a result of constraint upon the course, sthula, ah, sthula and the essential attribute, starupa, and the septal, suksma, and the inherits, and veya, and the purposiveness, atharvapa, there is a subjugation of the elements. In this system, the five elements, beginning with earth, which in essence are a generic form and a particular, have its, as its particular sounds and other perceptible things. These particulars, together with their properties, dharma, shape, and the rest, which are to be described, are technically called cores. This is the first form of the elements, too. The second form is its generic form. For example, limitation and extent, murti, is the generic form of earth. Liquidity of water, heat of fire, wind is mobile. For air goes everywhere. The second form is technically called essential attribute. This generic form has sounds and other concrete perceptible things as its particulars. And in this sense, it has been said, all these perceptible things that are inseparably connected with one genius, pradikabila, are distinguished only by their properties. In this system, a substance, dravya, is an aggregate, samadhaya, of the generic form and of the particular. For a collection, samuha is of two kinds. One, that which the names of its different component parts have disappeared, as for instance, a body, a tree, 
a herd, a forest, and that collection in which the different component parts are specified, each by a term, as for instance, of both kinds, entities and human beings. One part of the collection is entities, and the second part is human beings. I say entities because I'm not sure. Are they saying devas, so light beings and clay beings? Um, only by means of these two is it termed a collection. Furthermore, either the distinction, either the distinction or the identity may be emphasized. You know, the difference between yoga and tantra, right? We may say that a grove of mango trees are gathering of Brahmins, or we may say a mango grove are a Brahmin gathering. Again, the collection is twofold, that of which the parts exist separately, and that of which the parts do not exist separately. A grove or a gathering is a collection from which the parts are separable. A body or a tree or an atom is a whole, samangaka, of which the parts are not separable. Patanjali says that a substance is a collection, the different component parts of which do not exist separately. And thus, it has been explained what the essential attribute is. Three. Now, what is the subtle form of these elements? The answer is it, the subtle substance, the cause of the elements of any one of these elements. An atom is one part. Its essence is the generic form, and the particular, an it, is an aggregate consisting of different parts, which cannot exist separately. Similarly with all the tan matras. This is the third form. Now the fourth form of the elements, the aspect with its dispositions to discernment and to activity and to inertia, and conforming to the nature of their efforts, are described by the word inherence. Now the fifth form of these elements is purposiveness, the having of experience and of release, as their purpose is inherent, and the aspects guna, and the aspects are inseparably connected with the elements and the products of the elements, and thus all has a purpose. By constraint upon these five elements of the present time and their five forms, the sight of the essential attribute of these of this or that form, and the subjugation of it come about. The yogin, by mastering the five essential attributes of the elements, masters the elements, and as a result of their subjugation, the evolving causes of the coarse elements follow the commands of his will, just as the cows follow their own calves. Word for it, coarse, subjugation, the compound to be analyzed as the coarse and the essential attribute and the subtle and inheritance and the purposiveness as a result of constraint upon these, the course and the essential attribute and the subtle and the inherent and the inheritance has the purpose of has the purpose that has the purposiveness there and is a subjugation of them. Remember, one of the definitions of Luciferianism is self-mastery, not other people do one here of these for me. But no, we have self-mastery. Um, he describes the Course by saying, in this system, the sounds and touches of and colors and tastes and smells belonging respectively to earthen and watery and fiery and windy and airy classes or elements have correspondingly the particulars such as the first sadja or the third notes are heat or cold or blue or yellow are astringent or sweet or fragrant or other particular instances for because these are different from 
each other, in name and form, and use they are particulars. Of these particulars are five in earth, four counting out smell are in water, three counting out smell and taste are in fire, two counting out smell and taste and color are in wind. The Bosbunt are in fire, two counting out smell and taste and color are in wind. The Bosbunt. Okay. Sound alone is in air. Particulars such as these, together with their properties, dharma, form, and the rest, are technically called course in this system. And in this system, dharmakaya, is, is that what it's called? The, the base on which the other is? Um, course in this system. And in this system, to begin with, the properties belonging to the earthen element are shape, weight, Roughness, resistance, and stability. Sustenance, vrtte, divisibility, endurance, meagerness, hardness, and usefulness to all. The properties of water, liquidity, subtlety, brilliance, whiteness, sinuosity, mordava, weight, coolness, protectiveness, purification, cohesion, are the qualities of water. The fiery properties, tending upwards, purifier, burner, cooker, without weight, the splendid, destructive, yielding strength, this is fire having characteristics different from the two previous elements. The windy properties. Horizontal movement, purification, felling, impulse, power, changeability, casting no shadow, aridity, These are the various properties of wind. The airy properties, pervasiveness, enter penetration, unobstructiveness, are enumerated as three properties of air distinct in character from the previous properties. These are those properties, the shape and the following the particulars were said to be together with these. And shape is a particular instance of generic nature, such as cowness. He describes the second form of the elements by saying the second form is its generic form. Limitation and extent means natural density. Liquidity is the generic form of water and is the effective cause of cleanliness, murja, and plumpness and vigor. Hence is the generic form of fire, vahne, since everywhere heat, whether it be abdominal or solar or earthly, is inherent in fire, tejas. All this is moreover intended to show the identity of property and substance. Wind is motor. So he says, by the movement of grass and because it makes the body wander, Movidity is inferred to be the generic form of wind which goes everywhere, including the wind that says, Eat, eat. Going everywhere is air. Since it is clear that we apperceive sound in all directions, for it has been previously, Book 341, explained that one perceives earthen other sounds by means of the sound which is a specific quality of air the substance in which the organ of hearing inheres and this is what is described by the word essential attribute one such generic form such as limitation and extent has the particular sounds and other perceptible things such as the first note such as heat such as whiteness, such as astringency, such as fragrance. These constituting the particular instances. These constituting the particular instances of the generic forms, such as limitation and extent. That is to say, the generic forms, 
such as the limitations and extent, such as the shapes of lemons or breadfruit, carob, is that what they mean by breadfruit? Or Nero Balans are also distinguished from each other by differences in taste and so on, so that these tastes and other qualities are particulars of these generic forms. And in this sense, it has been said, all that are inseparably connected with one genus, Pradikabil, would refer to each of the elements as earth. Each of these is inseparably connected with some one genius, pradicabile, limitation and extent, for example, are aquidity. These that are thus inseparably connected are distinguished only by their properties, such, for example, as the first note. These, the generic form, such as limitation and extent, have been described, and the particulars, such as the sounds, have been described. And to those who assert that substance, dravya, is a substrate, atreya, for the generic form, and for the particular to them, he says, of the generic form. In the system, substance is an aggregate, samudaya, of the generic form, and of the particular those who take the point of view that the substance is a substrate of these two, even they cannot deny that both are experienced as an aggregate. For if this experience is to be denied, the do cannot have a container, a dara, which underlies them. Therefore, let us suppose that this aggregate is itself the substance, but we do not apperceive any substance underlying them, different from both and from the aggregate of the two which might be supposed to contain them by underlying them. Just as the mountain peak is a distinct thing, and other than the stones are the aggregate of stones, and underlies them. Thus, we say that substance is a collection, and not anything underlying. From this point of view, to prevent the error that substance is any kind of a collection, and to reach the position that the substance is a special kind of collection, he describes the various kinds of collections in the words, four of two kinds. Since this is so, substance is not any kind of a collection. Of two kinds is a thing which exists in two ways. One of these kinds is given in the words, has disappeared. These are so called in whose case the difference between the parts has disappeared. One which has parts in whose case the difference have disappeared is of this kind. What he means to say is this. The idea of the collection raised by words like body, tree, herd, or forest does not bring into consciousness the difference between the several parts since the words are not used to express this difference. So the collective sense only is brought to mind. There are four cases given as illustrations. The case in which the parts exist separately, the case in which they cannot exist separately. An animate thing, an inanimate thing, that parts exist separately or cannot exist separately, will be stated later. The second of the two kinds is described in the words, that collection which the different component parts are specified each by a term, as for instance, of both kinds, entities and human beings, now by the expression, entities and human beings. The two parts of the collection, which are expressed by the words of both kinds, have been specified as being separate. An objection is raised. The expression of both kinds does not bring the difference between the parts of that collection into consciousness. How, then, can we say that the collection in which the different component parts have been described has received names. The reply is in the words of these two. And remember the thing about language that when you're referring to two different things, um, you're referring to two different things, but sometimes you have 
multiple languages talking about the same exact things. Here's the word for God. Here's the word for God. Here's the word for devil. Here's the word for spirit. You know, it's the same thing. Let's not pretend, oh, well, jinn or this Arabian thing. It's like jinn is the word for all the male and female invisible beings that are incarnate like humans and that sort of thing. And, well, you know, animals. Um, that's literally what it is. So don't tell me that, oh, jinn are just the Arabian ones. No, jinn are the fari and the service and all sorts of other language terms. Uh, other terms in other languages, you know. Um, and it's because these very parts that the term collection can be imposed by the words of both kinds, which describe a thing having two parts. The idea of the collection is expressed since a sentence cannot but express the object intended by the sentence. This is the point. Once more, he describes the difference in qualities by saying, furthermore, both the identity and the distinction are emphasized. He describes the emphasis laid upon the difference in the words, a grove of mango trees, or a gathering of brahmans, because the genitive case is prescribed to express a distinction, as for instance, a cow belonging to the gargas. He describes the emphasis laid upon the identity in the words, a mango grove, are a Brahman gathering. The compound is to be analyzed thus. The mango trees, which themselves make up the grove, inasmuch as he wishes to emphasize the identity between the collective, the collection, and the parts. The words refer to the same object. This is the meaning. He states another kind of collection by saying, again, the collection is twofold. A collection which, of which the parts exist separately is one the parts of which have an independent existence apart with intervals in between. And with the word herd or grove is spoken, the trees and the cows, which are the parts of these collections are thought to have intervals between them. A tree, a cow, or an atom is a collection of which the parts do not exist separately, since neither the generic form and the particular, which are the parts of these, have intervals between them, nor do the dewlap and the other characteristic parts of the cow have the intervals between them. From among these same collections, he selects that the collection which constitutes the substance, dravya, saying, cannot be separated. Having thus incidentally explained what a substance is, he sums up the topic in hand with the words, thus it has been explained what the essential attribute is. 3. With intent to state the third form he acts, now, he gives the answer with the words from which these coarse elements are made. Of any one of these coarse elements, one part, a single mutation, is an atom. The generic form is the limitation in extent, are the like. The sounds and other perceptible things are the particulars. The atom has its essence in these two parts. 